My name is Audrey Eileen Pesci and I'm having an interview on my memories of Worthing. Audrey was born in 1927 at Weston Row, Worthing to parents Florence and George Bridger. She grew up on Surrey Street just off Rowlands Road. Audrey has fond memories of her childhood, including trips to the lifeboat house on Worthing Seafront. Well, when I'd grown up in Worthing, uh, I enjoyed it very much. It's uh, very carefree. It was quite safe going to parks and beach without any worry. And that was my really happy childhood there. I really, really was wonderful. This is a child, yes, Penny, up one side, across the top and down the other. Looked all into the, into the lifeboat. Very exciting. Many pennies were paid there. <laughs> Audrey also vividly recalls a devastating pier fire of September 1933. Ran right down the pathway to the bottom and uh, up to the seafront, ran along. And, oh, it, was, it really was a terrible sight, you know. Many, many people there, of course, looking, and uh, yes, I do remember that very well. Audrey was evacuated out of Worthing early in the war, along with hundreds of other local children due to fears of imminent invasion. I was evacuated to Mansfield, and I believe quite a lot of children from Little Hampton and Worthing, Mansfield, Nottingham. It was very, very strange, obviously, but uh, had a lovely billet. And uh, Mary, who I was billeted with, her husband was in, a soldier in the war. So really, we were great friends with one another. Her family were wonderful. Um, her father, obviously, was a culprit man. And uh, yes, and uh, quite a lot of the family, as you know, they all sort of lived together there, babies and all. Audrey returned to Worthing after the fear of invasion had passed. She got to experience firsthand the uncertainty, danger and excitement of life in a coastal town during the war, with her father an active member of the Worthing Home Guard. He used to come home all in his gear after he'd been, you know, to, to the whatever he had to do, walking and shooting. And I was always a little bit anxious, Mum was too, about the rifles bring it in, he of course had to keep it clean and when he stored away, I didn't know where he put it, but she obviously was anxious and so was I, he was rifle. But um, yes, yes, he was, he was great. He was really a great, great grand. He really was a f lovely father and mum. We did a little um, Spitfire concert. <laughs> I was young. And uh, we remember so well walking upstairs to the mayor's parlour presenting just a minimum of a few coppers, really. But uh, we did our best. Mum said very reluctantly, no, no piano out in the street, but a neighbour kindly loaned his, so that was fine. There was only four of us. It went down well, and I do believe we had um, a Fox Studios or something from London. I can't quite remember now. I'm sure we did, but nothing happened. We had to sort of beg, borrow, and do what we could with the costumes. <laughs> and we sang the war's time songs, uh, which was it was lovely. We did a little show in the old time. Neighbours had to bring their own chairs out, of course, um, but it went down well. Yes, yes. And then I joined the uh, GTC, uh, Girls Training Corps, because I wasn't old enough to join up. But um, that again was wonderful. The training we had was really wonderful. All what one would have. Um, I even received my, um, I think it was a, a Red Cross then, um, we had a lesson for them making proper beds, you know, hospital beds, bandaging, head bandage, head bandage and um, arms. And I received my certificate all for that. Yes, it's very exciting. And um, we had church parades to St Paul's. And travelling in the blackout on my trusty bicycle with a minimum of light in the lamp, and I long for moonlight nights. 
but there we are. I did it, and it's lovely to look back on those years. I think they were quite a few years. I remember uh, in Homefield Park, uh, where they used to have lovely cricket pre-war, and um, everything was all churned up with all the tanks and again lorries, all waiting, I suppose, for one thing or the other. It was a uh, when they all went. It was it was sad to see them go, really. But there we go. It was all churned up, mud everywhere. But it was a uh, it had to be done. We had the army lorries and the army in the Barclay Hotel, and they were all along the street. Had a doctor get out with my bicycle going to work, but uh, they were lovely young boys, lovely bunch of boys. And um, I was just nosy one time, and I said, well, what are you doing in there? And he said, well, this is a workshop. We said, we have to keep all the lorries, you know, fully going. I said, yes, I quite understand. And, um, and in the end, to my surprise, he presented me with two little model Spitfires because he said, you're Spitfire mad. <laughs> I said, well, they've done such a wonderful thing in London. And, um, and then one, one morning I came out and it was just so ghostly. It was just so dead quiet. And uh, I looked up at the Barclay, yes, all the windows were open, there were no socks hanging out and no pants or anything like that, you know. And I said, I said to Mum, I said quickly, I said, look, all the lorries have gone. And perhaps an oily rag or two, you know, just left from where they'd been working on the lorries. And uh, of course, I suppose it was all the way along the seafront, I think, was the same. I suppose, obviously, it was for some big reason, which later we, we knew about for the D-Day. So uh, it was very ghostly, I can tell you, after quite a few months of the lorries being there. That Lancaster bomber, yes, came down. Um, the, the plaza shook, apparently. And uh, it just skimmed over Surrey Street and also the, the Barclay Hotel. And suddenly it crashed onto the beach. And Mum came running into me. I was in the little slip room, fast asleep, shaking me, shaking me, saying, please get up, please get up. They're, sh they're dropping flares. And I said, what, roses? He said, oh, don't be silly. Just get up, hurry up. We must go downstairs and get under the stairs. Uh, in the cupboard and, and of course afterwards we we learned what had happened it was but the, as they as they said um the the heroes saved the town so sad only young boys yes so and of course and poor mum and dad they were absolutely covered in dust about the half of the bedroom ceiling fell onto the bed the front bedroom ceiling and uh, along the landing. But I, in my slip room, it was okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, Mum was pretty poorly afterwards. I think it was a real shake-up, you know. And uh, they were covered in all the horrible stuff from the ceiling, dust and black. So it wasn't very pleasant, <laughs> I'm afraid. So there we are. Like the rest of Britain, Worthing celebrated VE Day in style, with street parties, gathering and official ceremonies. However, rationing and some hardships didn't stop with the end of the war. Well, we were all jovial, we were all happy. Um, I think everybody, we just all were there, you know, and, and it was wonderful. The neighbours came out and we would say, oh, thank goodness now. But of course, the rationing still went on, even to 1948 when I was married. Still had a few ration books, not so many, but um, yes, so it was a really, really happy day. Very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs>